It's late 2018. For people who've been bitten by the travel bug, want to discover new places, or love poring over maps and globes, there's really just one place to head for. If you want a map, the only place to go is Stanford's. Because if they haven't got it in Stanford's, you're not going to get it anywhere else. I've been coming here for years. I remember when I was first getting into travel writing um, and first kind of researching where I was going to go, it would always be the first point of call because you could get a map for anywhere in the world. You could get a guidebook for all the offbeat places that you couldn't find elsewhere. I'm a travel junkie and this place, I mean, it's just perfect for people who travel. I've just bought five books with circular walks around Surrey, Hampshire, Yorkshire, where I'm from originally because it's all about being inspired sometimes. And I just love the fact that there is a shop like this that still exists in this internet age. But it's because we're living in an internet age that Stanford's is now preparing to move from Long Acre, where it's been based since 1901, to smaller and less expensive premises. We occupy three very large floors on a very busy shopping street and perhaps not surprisingly both the rent and the rates have risen significantly over the past few years. Our online business is growing really very significantly and our walk-in business is essentially flat. We have to have office premises that are suitable for supporting our online business. The new Stanford store will be located on nearby Mercer Walk where contractors are working hard to get part of the new shop up and running by Christmas. It's a very tight timeline that we're, that we're running through. Um, we've, only had, we've only got four weeks to complete the ground floor. The joinery workshop's incredibly busy at the moment, building all these bookcases and stuff, because you've got 13 going on the ground floor and something like 67 on the lower ground floor. So then, yeah, it's just a very, very short period of time. In fact, this isn't the first time Stanford's has moved sites. After its founder Edward Stanford first set up the business back in 1853, the company went on to occupy several different premises in the Charing Cross area before moving to Longacre. In the early years, Stanford simply sold maps, but it was his decision in the 1860s to start making them that would prove so crucial to the firm's success. I think Edward Stanford had the good fortune to be starting a business really in what was a period of great uh, empire building, having to send military men uh, to all different points on the globe. Um, but also there was, of course, a great merchant empire um, with people wanting to set up uh, trading posts and wanting to be able to send goods back to uh, the mother ship in England. And then there was a third need, which was people simply exploring. So we can think of uh, those such as Stanley and Livingston, who were customers of Edward Stanford's. There was just a huge public interest in what were the explorers of the day doing, and also what was going on, where, where was the British Army at that time? Where were they fighting wars? Maps have always been uh, produced in a very collaborative way. This is a good example of a map that says that it was surveyed by Colonel Gordon, and then he came back to Stanford's and at the bottom of the map it said it was drawn at Stanford's geographical establishment. By the early 20th century, the store was a well-established London brand. Stanford's was sort of known by uh, writers such as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote in The Hound of the Baskervilles that Sherlock Holmes needed to send down to Stanford's to get maps. So it appears in the, the local folklore of the day. Stanford's produced and sold maps of pretty much everywhere, including many of the capital itself. I think the fact that Edward Stanford started his business in London meant that he had a real interest in mapping London and uh, there are all sorts of different London maps at different sizes and different scales and different subject matter. One that's right here is a political map uh, and it shows the county of London and the boundary areas for the different voting districts. Today, map making is still a key part of Stanford's business. And although we live in a world of sat navs and GPS, there's still demand for printed maps. It's going to be an A0 size ordnance survey map. 
taken from the Explorer series of mapping and we've expanded it to 15,000 scale. This one was commissioned because it covers the area from Putney down to Hampton Court where the customer is rowing. So that's why they wanted to do this map. There it is. One of the good things about canvas is it doesn't crease. The actual mapping data is about 40 pounds. The canvas is about 50 pounds. So you're looking at a map about sort of 80, 90 pounds. Today, what we're doing, we're producing maps for people who are walking, who are going to different countries and need a city map. Uh, we're producing maps for architects at very, very high scale. People doing historical research into their family, law enforcement, all sorts of people. The canvas is fantastic in the fact that it keeps the detail. It doesn't actually make it blurry or anything like that. It's, it's really, really high resolution. And it's also the traditional material that maps were actually made of years ago. And that's why people like it. Over at the new store in Mercer Walk, the ground floor is now open for business in the run up to Christmas. Down in the basement, work is still ongoing to get the main bookshop space up and running. Over on Longacre, the old store's final public event is getting underway. Welcome to Stamford and thank you for being part of Stamford's history. This is the last ever event that we're doing in our Longacre store. Renowned travel writer Phoebe Smith is launching her new book on wilderness cooking. The Stamford store was a place where Ernest Shackleton came to get maps, where Scott the Arctic came, uh, Florence Nightingale was here. So, you know, it's got this huge legacy. Michael Palin started his Around the World from this shop. So uh, I think it's inspired a lot of people. Phoebe reckons that Stamford's big move is just the latest episode in the store's long history of changing with the times. I don't think you manage to survive that long if you're not good at adapting. Um, and that's what they've always done, you know, through starting awards, through doing talks and events. Uh, they're really good at continuously looking for new ways to engage people, uh, using blog posts to connect with people, jumping on social media for an opportunity. You know, we're all talking about it. We're all saying we're going to be here and we're going to talk about this and we're, you know, I'm going to Stanford to pick up this book. And, and I think in a way social media and the way that, that younger people connect with it now can actually help it rather than hinder it. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate with us the arrival in our absolutely wonderful new shop. In early January, with all the work now completed, the new shop is officially open to the public, kicking off a new chapter for Edward Stanford's store. Stanford's uh, will continue to thrive uh, if we can continue to meet the needs of today's explorers and, and travellers, and I, I truly believe that we can do that. I can keep coming back and keep getting inspired, and, and it's such a relief to hear that the Stanford's name will carry on. Yeah.